So today we have the most common method that is used for uh, non-linear uh, uh, solution, and uh, it is uh, the newton uh, raphson method. So what is the newton raphson method? Imagine I have a curve like this, and I want to find this, the zero crossing, which is f of x equal to zero. So it's a nonlinear function. As you can see, it's a nonlinear function. And my interest is to find this zero crossing. So I'm solving, as you know, for f of x equal to zero. Okay, so I start with an initial guess, x0. This is my initial guess. I find the corresponding f of x of 0. Okay, now my objective is to find the second guess for the iteration. So I want to go this way, definitely, towards the answer. So what we will do, we will find f prime at x of 0. And what is f prime? f prime, as you know it, f prime for any function is equal to change of y divided by change of x. So we will have two points, this point that I just defined by x of 0, and this point, which is x1. And you will see that, as you can see here, the derivative of x at 0, x0, zero, is equal to the difference in y, which is f of x of 0 minus 0, because the function here is equal to 0, divided by x of 0 minus x of 1. So the only unknown that we don't know is x of 1, because this, this, this are all known to us. So from this, I can find x of 1. This is my x of 1, is equal to x of 0 minus f of x of 0 divided by f prime of x of 0. Now what I will do, I will do the same thing. I will go up here and find f of x of 1. To find x of 2, I will take the derivative. And you can see this will be your x of 2, same thing. So you see that you are converging very, very fast to the answer. So we can write our uh, general solution that x at i plus 1, so I, x for the next iteration, equal to x of i of the previous iteration minus the ratio of the function at the previous iteration divided by the derivative of the function at the previous iteration. So it's very straightforward, very simple, and to save time, let's just jump into an example. So here we will solve the same example we did before. We did this example using the bisection method, and we use this example uh, using the uh, uh, symbol uh, point method. Okay, now let's do this uh, using the neutral option. So f of x, if you recall, was equal to x squared minus, minus 11. So I need to find the derivative of this. So f prime of x equal to 2 of x. So your x i plus 1 is equal to x of i minus the ratio of f of x of i divided by f prime of x of i, okay, which is equal to x of i minus x squared i minus 11 divided by 2x of i. So we'll start with x of 0 equal to 3, and this is my estimate for the new iteration. Okay, so let's move on. So x of 1 will equal to the previous iteration, which is x of 0, minus the function x0 minus 11, but I will use x of 0, divided by 2 of x of 0. This is equal to 3. This is my initial guess. Minus 3 squared minus 11 divided by 2 times 3, which is equal to 3.3333. 3, 3, 3. 
So this is my first iteration. Now we'll go for the second iteration, which is X. Now let, let's, if this is my current iteration, and this is my previous iteration, which is three, let's find the error. Let's see how much error we have from the first solution is equal to 3.3333 minus three divided by 3.33333, and this is equal to 9.999%. So to start with, this is my error. Now, and this is the big advantage of using the newton raphson method. We'll see now how this answer, when you go for the second iteration, how much the error will be. Okay, so I will find x of two, which is equal to x of one minus x of one squared minus 11 divided by two x of one. And this is equal to 3.333 minus 3.333 squared minus 11 divided by two times 3.333. And you will find that this is equal to 3.3167. So if I want to find the error now, current solution, which is 3.3167 minus the previous one, 3.3333, absolute value divided by 3.33, sorry, 3.3167, you will find that the error goes to 0.5%. See how much the error has dropped? significantly. And now if you go for the third iteration, you will find that, that the, even the error goes to almost become zero. And this is the biggest advantage of the neutral raphson that its uh, conversion rate is very, very, very fast compared to the previous methods. Uh, this is the best method when it comes to diversion, sorry, into converging, converging rate. Uh, let's take another example, uh, see this as well. So here we have f of x is equal to uh, x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 4. We start with initial guess equal to 6, okay? So again, we have to find the derivative. So f of prime of x equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. So your x of 1 equal to x of 0 minus the function, which is x cubed at 0 minus 6x squared at 0 plus 9x0 minus 4 divided by 3x squared, which is x0 squared minus 12x of 0 plus 9. Now, if we substitute x0, is equal to 6. This will take us that x1 is equal to uh, 4.8889. Okay, now we'll go for the second iteration, uh, third iteration, fourth iteration. So we see here we are, we are converging. So this is uh, the neutral option method. It's very simple to do. Uh, but it will have some problems. Nothing is perfect. Our role here as engineers, we need to know the limitations of these methods. We, just, we don't just uh, apply them blindly, but we try to understand what is the limitation. For example, the first method. What is the limitation of the first method? First of all, the conversion is very, very slow because you are bisecting the region of interest every time. So the error is reduced to half, 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 only half. So it will take long time, but it guarantees conversion. However, it guarantees conversion only if you have uh, one answer between the brackets. Sometimes you don't know where is your answer. Uh, so you have, by, based on your understanding of the physics of the problem, as we did in the diet question, we will try to find what is the range of the solution so that I can find the range where is my answer. 
uh, and and for this one sometimes it's misleading when is whenever there is uh, it applies the condition which is if uh, the function at the upper limit times the function at the lower limit is less than zero, but there is no zero in between, as we have seen, like in function one over x, then it will keep on going on, 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 but will never converge. Okay, so that's the first method. The second method, on the other hand, has a faster rate of converging. However, it has a problem because you have to put the function in a different format, not f of x equal to zero, but x is equal to g of x. And in some examples, it depends on how you set the function, as we have seen there is a criteria. Uh, it may converge, it may, it may not converge. So this is another challenge. Sometimes it's really, really very, very, very hard to find, the to write the function in the format of x equal to g of x and it converge. You have to do a lot of mathematical uh, manipulation to come up with a formula that will allow this to uh, to converge. Now, neutral option looks to us so far fancy, nice, very fast. It has no problem, but nothing uh, is free of problems in numerical methods and actually uh, in life. Everything has its own shortcomings, but we need to understand the shortcomings so that when we apply it, we know exactly what we are talking about. And let's start with this one. Uh, this is will highlight some of the problems that we might see in uh, in Newton uh, Raphson method. So find the root of f of x is equal to sine of x. So my function is the sine function, and I will try here different initial condition one, two, one point five, seven, four, and five, and we'll see these are in radians. Those are all in radians. So we will see now. Based on my initial conditions, I will have different solution. Okay, and this is expected because uh, your function. This is your function. X. Uh, this is the this is the solution. Uh, x of i plus one. The second iteration equal to x of i minus sine divided by its derivative, which we have a tan function. So this is the original function. As we expect, we have multiple zeros, not just one. Answer. We have many answers. An infinite number of answers, as a matter of fact. Okay, so it depends where is your initial guess, you will have a different answer. But it's not that simple. Sometimes you are targeting certain answer, but because of some problems with interruption, you take, you, you will get a totally different answer. And let's demonstrate this. So let's start that you start with x equal to 1. This is the first guess you have, x equal to 1. So if x equal to 1 here, so I will take the derivative of this. So this is that derivative. It will intersect at a negative point. So I will go back here and then take another derivative here. Okay. Then let's go up. Another them, so it's very clearly that we are converging around the zero. So that's correct. So we converge around the zero. So you start with one, you converge. So one is the closest to zero. So it's obvious that, okay, it's clear. Uh, my answer converged to the zero. Okay, let's start with the two. So I'm expecting that my answer will converge to the pi answer, which is 3.14, uh, and let's see this. So we'll start with the two now. Okay, so this is my two here. So take the derivative, find the intersection, and then take the point here, take the derivative, take the point, the derivative, yes, we are converging to the pi. So if I start with one, close to the zero, the closest root to it is the zero, it converges at the zero. If I take two, it converges to the closest one. That's perfect, that's what I want. What I want, when I uh, select my, when you have multiple zeros, so when I select certain initial guess, I want my answer to converge to the closest answer. Now, let's see something in between. And let's make it a little bit 
uh, closer to the two. So we'll have, if you go back here, to that 1.57, okay? So let's start with the 1.57, okay? So I will have 1.57, so it would be something. The answer is 1.57 uh, between. And this here is the 1.57. This is because this is 1.5. And now we see something strange happening because we have to take the derivative. So the derivative will go, I cannot show it actually, it will go, but I will show the answer. It goes very far away from the two or from the one. And here it is, it goes to this conversion around this answer. Why is that? Imagine if we take the answer at exactly 1.5, I mean my initial guess. And this is, shows one of the disadvantage. If I show this at 1.5, I will never converge actually. And why is that I never converge? Remember, my x of i plus 1 equal to x of i minus f of x of i divided by the derivative. Now, if when I define the derivative, if the derivative is 0, I will have an undefined function. And this is why I cannot find any answer. And with the sine x divided by cosine x, when you uh, define the function, the derivative at x equal to 1.5, it is it becomes equal to uh, 0. And hence, uh, you will not, or tan, the tan function here at 1.5 radian, it is goes to infinity. And hence, you will not be able to find an answer. Uh, around 1.5, it's not exactly 1 over uh, 1.5, but close to this. Now, if you go for 4, if, I, if answer is 4, now at 2, it converge here. At 4, it converge also to this, this function. If you go to 5, it will converge at 9.42. It will not converge at, uh, at 2 pi or at 6 point something. Okay, as we expect. So it is actually, it is not really uh, predictable where the answer will converge. And this is another disadvantage of the neutral Raphson. Yes, it converges very fast, requires only one guess as opposed to the uh, bisection method. However, uh, one of the major drawbacks that if you have a zero value or near zero value, you have a problem in the slope. For example, in this here at x equal to zero or 0 0.02, this is becomes equal to zero, and because you are dividing by by zero. Another problem with uh, neutral Raphson, it might oscillate. If you come close, uh, what we call a local uh, minima or maxima. Like for example here, you start at 3.5, with 3.5 here, and you try to solve this. So 3.5, you go here. Okay. You will start to see that, uh, this is actually, it has to be like down a little bit here. here. It's like this, okay then you will find that this function is start to oscillate before it converges. It keep on going up and going between these two values. So it will go like this. Okay, so here is the, the zero crossing. It's around five, around 5.07. Uh, then you, the function here, go back here and keep on going like this, going between the two between uh, 5 and 6, it's going between value of 4, 5 and 6, 5 and 6, and it will not uh, reach to the, to the answer. Before we go to the practical example, let's see if you have a question here. What is the actual root in this example? I, I didn't calculate it actually, to be honest with you. I just wanted to demonstrate to you this oscillation problem. Uh, and in the last example, this is the last thing we'll do today uh, in the lecture. 
uh, we will uh, show you an, a practical example and we will derive together the nonlinear equation and we will solve it using the three methods the bisection method, the simple one point, and the neutral action. And we will, when we see all of them together, we see the, advan the clear advantage of each method. Just a little bit of background. Uh, temperature measurement is something very, very important for us as engineers, electrical, computer. Uh, many of us need to measure the temperature for different purposes. And there are different sensors. Thermocouples is the most uh, common uh, type of uh, temperature sensors. Okay. And a thermistor is another one. And uh, RTDs, which is the platinum resistance temperature detector. Now, I don't want to go into details. This is not the, the, the place to discuss these sensors in details. But what I want to discuss is the RTD. RTD basically, it's a, a sensor, nonlinear sensor, uh, that uh, relate temperature with resistance. So it is a material from platinum, as you can guess. Uh, this material uh, will have a variable resistance that change with the temperature. So we can measure the resistance of the sensor, but then I have to convert the uh, resistance into a temperature using a nonlinear equation, okay? So let's see this equation and let's derive it and then let's uh, try to solve one practical question, okay? So this is how the uh, RTD looks like. It has different forms. So it is basically, it has two leads because you want to measure the resistance. And then you will have a thin film or a thin wire of platinum uh, wrapped, or uh, it could be uh, in, in this uh, shape embedded in, in a ceramic substrate like this one. And this is your sensor. So this is the sensor that you put it in the place that you want to measure the temperature. It's either this or that. So as you measure the, the temperature it changes, this resistance of the Platinum will start to change, and you detect this by measuring the resistance. And then you need to convert back this temperature, the resistance that you can measure, into a, a temperature. So when we look here, there is there are different relationships. It depends on what temperature range. So if you are, for example, are interested in the minus range, the function is equal to this. It's a cubical function. If you are above the zero, it's a second order and if you go to the data sheets for RTD you will find different functions sometimes they change the materials so you will have a different functions and here as you can see R is the resistance that you measure R0 is the resistance at zero degree which is 100 ohms so it's a known value for the uh, for the platinum and then you have two constants A and B and these constants are given to us A uh, a and B. C is not relevant for the uh, measurement of the temperature higher than uh, zero. Okay, so if I want to use it for this application, I will end up with a second order equation. And the only unknown is T. This is the only thing that I'd like to measure. So let's, let's move on. And let's see here, we will uh, consider the second equations only in this example. So we will consider this because we are measuring something between 0 to 850 degrees centigrade. Okay, so we'll start with the bisection method. So here, assume that we measure 139.1 ohm. So the R that we measured is this. I want to find for this temp, uh, resistance measurement, what is the temperature? What is T? As simple as that. So if we rewrite the equations, if you remember, it was R, this is the R, equal to R0, which is 100, it's a constant, plus 1, plus, this is the constant A, A, this is A, times T, which is the unknown, minus, or plus B, B is minus 5.775 times 10 to minus 7, so this is your, your B, times T squared. So we end up with, Take the 100 to this side, divide by 100. So you will have this, just a little bit of arrangement. You will have, this is your equation. Okay, so it is a second order equation. 
And now, how to find the limits? Now, here again, if you record, we said that we can define the limit by understanding the physics. So I am measuring something. I know what is the limit of my system. What is the measurement? I know the upper limit and the lower limit. So I know that my system temperature for this specific example, let's say from zero to 300. I can, I will not, my system cannot produce a temperature more than 300 or less than zero. So I know that is my limit. This is where is my uh, temperature range. So again, by understanding the physics of the problem, I can set the limit uh, of my upper and lower limit. Perfect. Okay, so now let's start just to confirm that my answer is really between zero and 300, I need to find, as you know, I need to find f of zero and f of 300. So if you substitute, this is equal to 5.775, 10 to minus seven, okay, times zero squared, minus 3.9083 times 10 to minus three times zero, this is the t, the t here, and plus 0.391, so it is 0.391. Then I will find F at 300. I don't need to substitute, I will just give you the answer. It's equal to minus 0.7294, so the answer is actually correct, is between zero and 300, because F of zero times F of 300 is less than zero, and this is the criteria. Okay, there was one question here. Uh, okay, okay, now uh, there was a question and then that student somehow got it. Okay, that's perfect. Now, I will start with my initial guess. Okay, my initial guess is my T1. What is my T1? I will take the average, zero plus 300 divided by two, which is 150. So this is my initial guess, 150 degrees centigrade. I will find F at 150. If I do the calculation, I will find this is minus 0.1822. Okay, so what does this mean? This is uh, positive, this is negative. So I know that the answer now has to be between zero and one. 150. So now I will find the second iteration, T2, which is equal to 150 plus zero divided by two, and this is equal to 75 degrees centigrade. Now, if I compare this with the previous one to find the error, my error here percentage is equal to 75 minus 150 divided by 75, this is 100%, very, very, very large error. Okay, uh, perfect. So now I will find F at 75, and then if you do that, you'll find this equal to 0 0.110148. So it means now, now the new answer is between 75 and 150, and we keep doing this. Now, if we look to the answers, iterations, now we'll go, this is the second, third iteration, fourth, fifth, sixth, and this is the function, and this is the error. Start here, 33, 29, 4, until we reach to something very, very reasonable. It took us around 12 iterations, and you see here that the error is half. Every time it's almost half from the previous one, and this is because of the nature of the algorithm, which is the bisection method. Okay, excellent. Now let's solve the same example, but using the uh, simple one-point uh, iteration. Now, in the one-point iteration, we know that I have to change the function from f of t equal to zero into t is equal to g of t. So I have to have a T. It seems in this question, because we have a T, it's easier uh, to uh, take care of it because the function was 
uh, 0.391 is equal to 3.9083 uh, times 10 to minus 3t minus 5.775 times 10 to minus 7t squared. So I have this term with t, so I will take this other side and then divide by this. So from this, you will find that your t is equal to 0.391 plus 5.775 times 10 to minus 7 t squared divided by 3.9083 times 10 to minus 3. So this is my function now. And let's start with t equal to 300. Let's start with the upper limit. And we'll find t1. If you do that, T1, just substitute, you will find this is equal to 113.3421. So it is very good approximate. Then we'll go for uh, T2. If you do that, you will find that T2 substitute is equal to 101.9417. And the error is equal to 101.9417 minus the previous answer, 113.3421 divided by 101.9417, all absolute value times 100. So this is equal to 11.1835. Not bad. And now we start keep on doing good third iteration, fourth, fifth. So we see the, uh, the error, how it drops. It is very, very, very fast. The major drawback of this point is how to set the function, because it's not always easy to set the function. This is the major drawback with the simple uh, one-point iteration, but it's converging uh, compared to the previous one is way faster. Faster than both of them is, of course, the neutral option. This is the fastest one among all the techniques is the, is the uh, neutral option technique. Neutral option technique requires us to find the derivative. So we know that f of t, we know the function of a t is equal to, uh, why is uh, a question here, why is the upper limit is 300? Uh, this is just an assumption. Meaning what? Meaning that I am the one, I am the engineer who is uh, working with the system. So I know that the system I am measuring is 300. It could be 400, it could be 100. Uh, this is depends on the physics of the problem. So I just assumed that the system I am going to measure, it goes from 0 to 300. It cannot be lower than 0, and it cannot be go, uh, 300. Like, for example, if you are measuring uh, uh, water uh, on a stove, so you know that the temperature goes from, let's say, ambient temperature, which is 20 degrees, to this around 100 degrees. It has to be between this. It cannot be uh, 300. It cannot be minus 50. So it has to be between this range. So understanding what, what, what you are measuring will help you to set the limits. OK. So your f of t is equal to 5.775 times 10 to minus 7t squared minus 3.9083 times 10 to minus 3t plus 0.391. I will find the derivative if a prime of t, which is equal to 2 times 5.775 times 10 to minus 7t minus 3.9083 times 10 to minus 3. So we found f of t, f of prime of t, then I will set my iteration is equal to t of i minus f of t divided by f prime of t. And again, here we will start with t is equal to 300. Same initial condition. If you do that, you will find t at 1 is and you substitute will equal to 
Then we'll go for T2. Your T2 will equal to 101.56. Ninety-seven. If you found, if you try to find the error, you will find this is equal to one zero one point five six ninety-seven minus ninety-five point one ninety-one divided by one zero one point five six ninety-seven, and this is equal to six point two seven nine percent. A little bit better than the previous method. And when you go to the iteration, it converges, it becomes zero almost. So it, in, like in three iteration, compared to five iterations. So it, this is faster than the, the one uh, point. Uh, and Neutral-Axon method for your information is one of the standard methods are used right now in many, many applications.